The forthcoming conference in December of this year in IIT Madras has the target of toppling the Aryan Dravidian divisive theory that prevents the unity of India from materializing. Over the past 25 years, we have organized well over 300 conferences specifically on some aspects of Indian civilization. We have been doing this in India and in North America. Uh, we are sponsoring them, funding them, coordinating them. And in the process, we've learned a lot of lessons because we've gotten to know the who's who among scholars in these areas. I have noticed that most conferences suffer from either using a foreign colonized lens, or if they use an Indian lens, it tends to be very emotional, very bombastic, perhaps lacking in rigor, perhaps lacking in a proper due diligence to select only the best papers, and nor is there any follow through from one conference to the next to bring about a game-changing impact. And there is hardly ever any effort to train the next generation of scholars to continue the work. In other words, they are fragmented, one-off, topic here, topic there, with no continuity, no end-to-end -end solution that is being developed through the series of conferences. This is why we started the Swadeshi Indology series of conferences. Each conference has a particular goal. We want to achieve that goal. We want to change the discourse in a measurable way, not just a random scattering of papers on some topics, but we actually want to change the discourse in the world out there. Starting with this goal, we work backwards. We figure out what are the particular theses, what are the particular positions that have to be disrupted, what are the new ones that have to be constructed, and then we find the best scholars we can to, to build this case. We pay them, we pay for their travel, we, pay for the, we give them stipends in certain cases because we want the best of the best. The point is we are competing against the likes of Ford Foundation. We are not doing something where amateurs, hobbyists, uh, people with nice, uh, you know, big names, uh, celebrity status come and drop in and create a mela. We are not producing a mela. It is not an event. What we are producing is what happens after the event is over and we produce solid discourse in written form to make a change. And this requires funding, this requires serious organizing, it requires end-to-end -end planning. Each of our conferences should be project management in a corporate style and produce good output, no-nonsense results, not interested at all in impressing people or bringing in intellectual lightweights who have some political clout. The, the panels and major themes include uh, a, a critique of uh, what I call Dravidian Hindu phobia, a critique of the whole Aryan Dravidian divisive theory. These are disruptive topics. Then there are constructive topics, like the spiritual tradition in Tamil culture, the spiritual traditions built into the whole Tamil classics, and the unity of Tamil, you know, genius of Tamil works, and how they are unified and interwoven with the rest of Bharat. This conference will not be isolated and decoupled from prior conferences. In fact, we're going to release a couple of important books developed from prior scholarship. It's interesting that many people have no clue as to how much money it takes to do a world-class conference in a very professional way. So let me give you a summary. First of all, the event itself is going to involve 100 scholars and we will pay for travel, living expenses, uh, the, the uh, actual meals, the uh, halls we rent and so on. So that's a fairly substantial budget we have. Uh, we are also giving awards, very substantial awards, to uh, eight best papers. Uh, we are also giving stipends to some of these scholars for up to a year before the conference to develop this work when there's great merit. And also when the conference is over, there is a substantial budget for a team of editors who edit everything at a very professionally high standard and the printing of these books. Uh, we want to give these books away to those who cannot buy them. For instance, all the libraries, all the Sanskrit universities, various places where we'll donate the books for free. So uh, a few thousand copies have to be printed and, and distributed at our expense. We need donations this year more than previously because this year we don't have institutional support. It's support from individuals like you. I request you 
to be generous and help us with your donations.